Hey guys, good to see you. This is just a short video that I originally didn't plan on doing. I've got a few requests about sharing the design and models of this build, and now I had finally time to fix everything and publish it. So the point of this video is to go over the model and explain all the bits and pieces in it so you guys can follow along and make use of this design if you so decide. The 3D model seems a little messy, since the model was imported to Fusion 360 from SolidWorks and the original folder structure with proper naming was lost. To help battle this, I made an Excel sheet with proper naming, quantities and descriptions of all the components, and hopefully this will make the model have more sense. Also a quick note here that both the mill and the housing have now been built, so everything you see on the screen also exists in real life. The mill was already assembled and tested with pen as a tool and paper as a stock. Everything worked as expected, so I took the machine to pieces and painted everything dark grey, and followed with a final assembly where I aligned, tightened and greased everything properly. Alright, here we have the design, first time completed with the housing. I'm gonna hide the housing first and we'll briefly take a look at the mill. The mill has been covered quite thoroughly in the earlier videos, so I'm going to keep this section short. We're going to start this by checking out the steel parts required to build the frame. As you've seen, the bottom frame is rectangular hollow section pipe. There are two sizes, 60x40x4mm on the long beams and 60x60x4 on the short cross beams. These are welded together with 25 by 25 mm square bars and they form the foundation for linear rails as well as the z-axis assembly. The motor mount is built from three flat steel bars 8 mm thick each that are welded on front of the base. Thinner 6 mm steel is used for the ball screw mounting surfaces. On the x-axis there is a 10 mm thick steel plate forming the base. 25 by 25 mm square bars are once again used for spacing the axis and 6 mm steel flats for mounting the ball screws. Motor mount is once again 8 mm thick flat bar. Z-axis assembly sits on top of a mounting plate that is 12 mm thick. The tube is 150 by 150 by 4 mm in size and has 20 by 20 mm spacious this time. Ball screw mounts and motor mounts are similar to what was seen on X and Y axis. Now I've gone over the machine components in earlier videos, but I'm going to list them all here for convenience. HGR20 rails everywhere with corresponding sleds, 400mm long on Y and Z axis and 500 on the X axis. Ball screws are SFU 1605 with matching lengths. Motors used here are NEMA 24 closed loop steppers bought in a set with driver. Limit switches are ME 8112s. Mounts for all the limit switches have been 3D printed. Alright, let's check the housing next. This is a new design and new construction. I originally had a frame made out of steel tubes, but I opted to make a new one with aluminium profile. This allows for a lightweight and solid frame with easy mounting solutions for all the hardware. The frame itself is a mix of 3060 and 3030 profiles. 3060 was used for all the supportive beams and 3030 for everything that doesn't need to carry a lot of weight. Smaller 2020 profile was used for supporting the sheet metal housing around the mill. This sheet metal housing is constructed from 1mm thick sheet metal, the bottom part is bent from a single sheet and the edges are welded together. The back plate is then fitted inside the little lip in the bottom part. Back plate with its side and top parts is also made out of a single sheet metal. On top of these components, we've also got the top plate as well as the two little angle plates. These angle plates are fixed to the aluminum profile and act as a mounting surface for the side windows. These windows along with the door window are 3mm acrylic plates. The front window along with the roof plate are part of the door assembly. The backbone of this door assembly are aluminum angle bars together with a single aluminum profile up front. There are two pivot points with hinges in the door assembly that allow the door to be lifted up and pushed back to have great access to the machine from the front as well as from above. I'm hoping this makes it easier to work with the machine having more open space around. The sheet metal housing with the windows is constructed in a way that forms a somewhat water seal assembly. This gives the opportunity to implement cutting fluid system in the future without making a mess around the garage. At last, this whole housing sits on four adjustable caster wheels that support a thousand kilogram load combined. Plenty for the whole machine. Now, this was a short overview that I hope helps anyone struggling with either copying this design or designing a mill of their own. 
If you have any questions or need extra details of some parts, please leave a comment below and I'll help you out. Thank you guys for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe. Assembly and first test runs are coming soon. Cheers and see you in the next one.